Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm definitely not looking forward to this. After I previously reviewed Jacob's Ladder Remake that came out just recently that totally made me have PTSD and that's no laughing matter because there are people out there who have PTSD and it's, you definitely can't joke about that but it sure as hell made me felt like I had it by watching this piece of shit remake it totally insults my intelligence just thinking about it especially when I had to see flashbacks filled with shimmers you know, during the, the Afghanistan scenes or any other stupid scenes here and there. Well this time it's a reboot that just came out this year called Hellboy which is based on the Dark Horse comics by Mike Manola. And this isn't going to be present to, to sit through, but here we go. Now, as you know, I love Hellboy, along with the sequel, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, as well as uh, Hellboy Animated, which had two stories included. I saw the first movie in theaters for the first time, never even knew about it until I discovered it. It had Ron Perlman playing the, a half-demon, half-human, badass character. Teams up with Aid Sapien. It's like a, an intelligent um, type of creature. And his love interest, um, who's a pyrotechnic, named Liz. He also has a father who's a young scientist. He was the one who adopted him. He grew up, he loves cats, as you can tell. <laughs> so they team up uh, along with uh, the Boer for paranormal research and defense to go after those creatures, including Rasputin, uh, joining in with Cronin. Yeah, so, yeah, the one that has uh, the suit that's inflatable, yeah, because he has a gas mask and it brings in all these blades. Yeah. That was an awesome movie. It was the best superhero film I've ever saw that came out in the spring. Loved it so much that I bought the free this set uh, unrated edition DVD. Yeah. Although I still need to find the theatrical cut included because sad to say the theatrical cut is not on the director's cut DVD set. It's not even on the Blu-ray either. So, well, that stinks. Because it would be nice to have both cuts included. Cause, I mean, you get both the PG-13 cuts and the unrated cut to add more scenes. But all wise, it's, it's the same movie. Just slightly different from the, the theatrical cut. I mean, the original film was from Columbia Pictures and Revolution Studios, along with Lawrence Gordon Productions. Yeah, Lawrence Gordon produced the film. Joining in with uh, writer and director Guillermo del Toro, we had the Hellboy animated that aired on Cartoon Network. I remember it did, and they had two. And then we got Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, which is being bought by another studio, which is Universal Studios, along with Relativity Media. And, of course, Lawrence Gordon Productions joined in. And we got the actor who played the villain in Blade 2. So he's in the film playing the, you know, the brother, joining in with uh, his sister. They're basically twins. And um, they team up again, fighting more uh, creatures here and there. Of course, uh, Abe Sapirin was um, very intelligent. Um, at first, uh, he was voiced by David Hyde Pierce, but it was played by Doug Jones. Um, 
which then Doug Jones would later do the voice in the second movie. And uh, Selma Blair played uh, Liz uh, Sherman, pyrotechnic uh, shoots like flames and all that. That sort of thing. John Hurt played the adoptive father for Hellboy. Yeah, he's a scientist named Trevor. Yeah, God rest his soul, but he was a great actor. And we also had Jeffrey Tambor, who was the, uh, the head of the BPRD. Still, awesome movie. I mean, the second movie, I had, actually had to see it twice. Uh, one time I saw it at uh, AMC in Burbank. Uh, well, I went to see it at the 6th, which, sad to say, the, the speakers were completely distorted. So I couldn't hear very well from the, the right speaker. So it started to sound pretty scratched up and muddled. Didn't sound right. So I went to see the, the second movie again, this time with uh, my father and uh, my sister. So we had a great time. Sad to say the film didn't do so well at the box office uh, due to the fact that it came out in the middle of the summer of other blockbusters like, uh, for example, The Dark Knight was coming out, so people were paying tickets for that. Uh, we had films like... Um, the Journey of the Center of the Earth, yeah, that was coming out too. Um, came out at the same time, actually. And we just had uh, other movies uh, that were coming out in 2008. So it was like a big summer. But now, um, so sad to say, we, so we never had a third film. I mean, that's a shame because I wanted to see what happens next. I, you know, I wanted Perlman. To return because the way he plays him is exactly what I expected. I mean, he has played characters like that before, so it's always cool. I always wanted to see Abe Sapien again and, and Liz Sherman and all the rest, and hoping there'd be some more creatures joining in, maybe some new adventures. I mean, you never know. Anyway. But um, they did release uh, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, on 4K with Rich D. Um, and I do have that on Blu-ray, by the way, so there you go. Well, who knows? Maybe someday if I ever do review those, I'll, I'll show you to. Now, instead, we get a reboot. And Mike Manola joins in with uh, writer Andrew Cosby, who did... Uh, a TV series on Sci-Fi Channel called Eureka. Um, I've heard of the show. Yeah, it was a very popular show, but kind of, but I wasn't really into it. And you got Neil Marshall, the director of Dog Soldiers, along with uh, The Descents. Uh, two great films, but then he went on to do Doomsday, which was trash. Uh, Cetrion, which had Michael Fassbender, I don't think I ever saw. Now that I think about it, I don't think I ever saw that movie. May, but I guarantee you it's a lot better than this one. And yep, so far so good. This movie's getting bad reviews and it became a box office bomb. It's being released by Lionsgate, although originally it was going to be released by Summit Entertainment, because um, not that Lionsgate bought the company. Uh, they they co-produced the film with it, but now it's just Lionsgate, but they're still under Summit. So, of course, they're joining in with um, Dark Horse and Lawrence Gordon, all the rest. Even Millennium Media produce this mess. So. <laughs> this time we got David Harbour from Stranger Things. Yes, David Harbour who played Chief uh, Jim Hopper. Yes, the character was a bit of a badass too at times. I mean, once you get to know him. 
I love David Harbour. He's a great actor. He's been in other works in his career. I'll give him some credit for what he was given, but the problem is, though, he just doesn't have the kind of presence that Perlman had. He didn't have a strong presence like I was expecting it to be. You know, plus Perlman had a lot of humor and energy compared to Harbour. I mean, he's a good actor, again, but he just couldn't do it. I hate to say this. But he tried. Okay, so he tried. He just given some shitty dialogue that he had to explain, and he starts to act more like a teenager. A whiny ass uh, teenager. I mean, he has the behavior of that. The fact that he's bickering with his father, and then this time we got other characters joining in, like we have um, Ben Damio, who's an M11 agent, and then we have a psychic named Alice Monacan. So, another teaming up to defeat uh, a evil blood queen named Vivian Nimbu. Yeah, he was played by Mila Jabokovich, out of all people. <laughs> I mean, I do love Mila Jabokovich, though, when it comes to films like The Fifth Element, Days of Confuse, as well as uh, Cuffs, and um, some of the, the Resident Evil movies. I, at this rate, the second and third films, yeah. I don't care about the rest of them. The first one, not a big fan of, but... Hey, I understand. I mean, it's it's where it got its start. But I know my friend Quinn loves that movie, so I respect his opinion. Maybe I'll uh, give it a chance. Who knows? But it's not as good. However, I'm probably one of the few people who actually did enjoy Ultraviolet. Uh, yes, uh, which is a superhero type of film. I know it's it's a silly one, but hey, it's not for everybody. I I understand. <laughs> you get the idea. So I'm not looking forward to this, but here we go. Um, it stars David Harbour, uh, Mildred Volkovich, Ian McShane. Yes, Ian McShane from John Wick, among other films he's been in in his career. Sasha Lane. Daniel Duck Kim, he was actually in a TV show, uh, Lost, he, and I think he was in other stuff too, so I know, I know he's familiar. Stephen Graham, Sophie Aquanetto, Alistair Petrie, Brian Gleason, Penelope Mitchell, Mar Stanley, Emma Tate, and Thomas Haddon Church. Yes, Thomas Haddon Church on Wings and Sideways. Yeah, and even Spider-Man Free. But he's a great actor, nevertheless. Um, apparently, uh, this Hellboy is an inspiration to um, to four comic books, all these episodes following, called The Darkness Calls, The Wild Hunt, the Storm and the Fury in Hellboy, Mexico, uh, from what I learned here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it's written by Andrew Cosby with um, Mike Manola joining in, based on his comic, and it's directed by Neil Marshall. The movie began set in the Dark Ages. We meet an evil blood queen, Vivian Numu, who is played by Mila Jovovich, who unleash a plague that would somehow straight from the tree that that all these creatures are going to come alive until King Arthur frauds her with Ganada's aid who's the member of her coven Arthur just uses his sword which is the Excalibur to cut, slice and dice her head along with her body and limbs and, and they place it into all these coffins and hit it somewhere 
across England when no one will find it until we begin to see a warlike fairy known as Huaka who's going to go around finding each and every one of them. You know, going around killing all these monks around and you know, slicing them, cutting from limb to limb, eating them, and <laughs> you get the idea. Just so he'll be able to put her back together again. So, and that's going to happen. So that's where, in the present day of Tijuana, Mexico, per normal investigator Hellboy, played by David Harbour, well, he's begin to search for a missing agent named Esteban Rules during a wrestling match while the song Rocky Like a Hurricane from the Scorpions is played in Spanish. So yes, there's, there's a huge wrestling match that they had together until he accidentally kills him while he was transformed into a vampire. His Rules' his dying words was in Spanish prophesying that the end is coming. So this is like a warning that something's going to happen once he finds out. So he's being brought back by the BRPD, the BPRD in Colorado, where he's being assigned by the leader of the group, who happens to be his adopted uh, father, Trevor Bruddenholm, played by Ian McShane. And, he, and he's joined in to assist the Osiris Club by hunting free giants in Britain. So, we meet the club seer, Lady Haddon, uh, joining in, which the whole idea was this, was that Lady Haddon was chosen to, to kill Hellboy when he came into the human world as a result of the Nazi project Ragnarok, instead of raising him completely. Yeah, because that's where we meet uh, Lobster Johnson, who's a superhero, and he was played by uh, Thomas Haddon Church. But meanwhile, that's where Gugashka, but meanwhile, that's when Huaka was advised by the witch Baba Yaga to retrieve uh, Numu's limbs, including her head, to put together. So that way, she may be able to grant a rich to have the seek revenge against Hellboy and also joins uh, Hellboy as her king. Yeah, once uh, he finds the Excalibur. If that ever happens, which it will. But during the hunt, Hellboy suddenly becomes betrayed and almost nearly got killed by the rest of the hunters before the Free Giants came along and, and starts uh, taking them down and he was being ambushed completely so he has to fight and kill all three of them until he collapsed from exhaustion only to be rescued by Alice Monaghan who's played by Sasha Lane she's actually a medium but at this rate She's a psychic who was actually once uh, rescued from fairies as a child. Um, but they also send uh, the SO-19 team to retrieve Hellboy. So that's where we got introduced by M11 agent Ben Damio, who's uh, played by Daniel Dai Kim, um, which we then learned that he's actually Believe it or not, and I'm going to say this, he's a, a, a cheetah type of creature that actually comes to life, but he only shows up at the end of the movie, like during the climax. Uh, so that's why he was using the uh, tranquilizer pen, so that way he doesn't transform and so he becomes the creature. Anyway, 
they weren't getting along very well with Hellboy, so there you go. So now they both join the team, head to the club, where um, Guyaka and Numu had to distract Hellboy, you know, already with the arm stolen. And they're about to cause the apocalypse ready to happen. Uh, of course, they, they came and they started killing everyone, or even the Lady Haddon, which that's where Alice had to possess her power by actually going straight into her mouth and be able to reveal her to explain what happened. So, before long, this is where we begin to hear a... Uh, well, all these bickerings and all this fights uh, between the Hellboy and, and his father, Trevor. Yeah, I know they always keep bitching, complaining. You know, he always has that, that teenage behavior, even though he's an adult. It's more like a man child in a way. Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, there's even some bits where. You know, he's like talking to him, you know, always uh, lecturing him and while on his cell phone. His, he has an iPhone and he was trying to either hang up or answer, but then he keeps uh, pressing the button and then it cracks his phone. And he's been having that problem many times already because that's why he keeps getting new a <laughs> new set of glass for the phone. Okay, well... We also learned that um, Luashka happens to be a changeling because uh, a long time ago, like back in 1992, he was um, disguised as a baby when he was uh, very young and Hellboy was there to go after it. And this is where, yes, we do see him in diapers going around chasing him and he's going around after that. That creature until they finally stop it. Yeah, that had to go on until the fairies finally found their child, which happens to be Alice. Okay, now I'm just going on because this this movie is just too much. Damio was also going to take him to M11 headquarters, which apparently was a <laughs> a fish and chips. Uh, location because of course he did have an argument with his father once again he was going to acquire a special bullet uh, for Hellboy yes because he's going to kill him so then what happened was I mean after his argument uh, Hellboy angrily storms off going which magically transports into Baba Yaga's house, which looks like a fucking moving castle. Like I was expecting, where's how? You know, how's moving castle? The Hayao Miyazaki film, which is in turn based on the book. <laughs> Great. And by the way, um, Baba Yaga, the witch, looks almost like somewhat of a reject from all these uh, Sam Raimi films. Maybe. Like Evil Dead, for instance. Yeah, the Evil Dead films. Looks like it, too. Uh, yeah, because... Um, well, what happened was Hellboy did actually shot uh, Baba Yaga's eye before. Almost about to kill her at first. So he was being talked into giving one of his eyes for New Moon's location. But he went, which he was trying to, which uh, at this point on, just when uh, Numu was about to uh, summon the, her spell and trying to rise all the creatures around, so that way they're ready for the attack uh, against Hellboy and the rest. Wow, this is going to go on. That's when um, Hellboy and the rest just joins in to, to stop her. As he shoots uh, Numu in the face. 
her eye pops out and then about to go after the hog as well and and then suddenly she just takes out uh, Winata joins in with her two members that that she just uh, taken out and then now um, Alice was being poisoned when the new moon just throws the dart on her neck and now they're trying to find a way to uh, help take out the, the poison dart out so it's being sent by a Merlin to actually cure Alice and then just puts both of them to sleep and telling him to actually find the Excalibur he tries to get the Excalibur but he failed to do so because he thought this was a bad idea once he saw his vision about what's going to happen once he uses it because he's going to be sending more more demons around but of course that's where we get the final climax where he, she sends out all of the creatures and they're going around you know, killing everyone you know, ripping their heads apart you know, their bodies apart all of that uh, and they're about to join in with the team and yes they, they even kidnap his father which yes I'm going to spoil it she actually did kill them as opposed to everyone and then Hellboy is under the power of Numu because he found the Excalibur sword and, and he's going to join in wanted her to be his king but uh, of course uh, even though Hellboy was about to fight against uh, Ugata, but Alice and Damio were about to stop him, and they did. Well, they tried to, until, until um, New Mu just uh, ended this way. You know, ended his entire life. You know, shrunk him into a into a little boy, and then explodes. So now, um, so the tr so anyway, they're they're trying to. T so anyway, uh, Alice just uses the power to revive uh, his father straight from her mouth again to explain, just tell uh, Hellboy to to actually don't li to not listen to her and just try to. You know, take out the Excalibur and just kill her off completely, and that's what he did. Just slice her head off and threw her all the way down into uh, the fire. Well, half her limbs are already laying there on the ground. Oh boy. Everything was going fine. I mean, now they're together as a team, so now they're going to team up to go after all these other guys and then all these agents around, and then that's when they're going to reveal Abe Sapien. Oh, boy. Yeah, because it's, it's basically a sequel bait ending to the movie. Uh, there's even a post credit scene and another one. See, it's trying to be like a Marvel film, too. Like, let's just add some more stuff, you know, just to get to the story and just adding some funny bits, some pointless bits, where he actually meets the ghost of Lobster Johnson. And then, yeah, when he was in the grave, um, all drunk, and just while he was in the grave of his father. And then, then we get uh, Baba Yaga, who trying to hire someone to uh, to go after so he's he's gone <sighs> oh god oh boy what can I say about this new Hellboy other than the fact that it sucks 
I mean, this is definitely the worst reboot I've ever seen. No doubt about it. Um, Harbor is just not the right choice uh, for Hellboy, even though he was trying. And yes, his real name is An Anong An Ramba. Uh, just to <laughs> get just to get your research straight on this on his real name. He has a Cambian. I mean, I know he's trying his best to uh, try to make him exactly like what Ron Perlman plays him, but the problem is he's just not humorous enough. He's not strong enough. He just seems like he's just trying to play somewhat of a a younger, rougher type that's just has a, a behavior of a teenager. It doesn't work. Uh, Mildred Bokovich, on the other hand, was just pretty bad in this film as the villain, uh, the Blood Queen. Just going around rambling and, and raving and all this crap. And yeah, she does have a British accent. And her character was just just nothing for me. Um, Trevor, uh, Ian Machin, I mean, he's just wasted. He's just going around, just act like an asshole for a fodder. And this whole bitching and complaining between him and, and Hellboy was just too much. Uh, I mean, it's almost like if he was arguing with uh, John Wick, if you think about it. <laughs> Boy, and John Wick's a way better film than this. Uh, Sasha Lane and Daniel Day Klim did nothing for me either. I, I just didn't buy them out as extra characters for Hellboy. The way that H. Sapien and, and Liz Sherman had. Because to me, they were a great team compared to this. I know they're from the comics, but... I mean, for the follow-ups, but it just didn't work for me. I wish we had seen more of Lobster Johnson though, I'll give you that. I mean, I wish Lobster Johnson was in the movie more, but I understand he was only there at the beginning and he's now a ghost. This really sucks. So basically, this was a an unused role for Thomas Haddon Church. Um, and yes, the movies are rated, and it's not PG-13, or unrated at this point. So of course, you're going to see a lot of blood and guts, a lot of gore, a lot of body parts ripped apart, all the blood that's rushing around. I mean, yes, you're going to see a lot of language, all of that in the movie, unlike the first two. I mean, come on, man. And yes, it's dark as... Just like the first two, but whatever, man. The CGI didn't look very good either, too. I mean, by comparison with the previous films. I mean, the CGI just looks pretty much like like any other CGI you see in, in today's movies that are not well done. But there are better films out there that have better CGI. It's too bad this could have handled better. Yeah. And sure, Hellboy did have a badass gun who can go after all these creatures, you know, by by some awesome um, results. You know, just shoot them in the head or or body parts or any other. <sighs> or the fact that he has all these horns, which of course he could shave it off take it off. Yeah. But this Hellboy by Harbor just didn't look exactly what I expected. He looked so totally wrong. I mean, his facial expressions he makes just like what Corman does. Because he did it better. It did nothing for me. It really didn't. I knew I was going to hate this film, but I didn't think it was going to be much worse.
I mean, the trailer was a piece of shit when I saw it, but I knew this was going to be intentionally, incredibly ludicrous. So, if you're a big fan of Hellboy, stay away from this fucking reboot. It's a piece of shit. Does no justice to the stories, the comics whatsoever. It's just a waste of time. It really is. And, and yes, I'm already getting tired of this whole Kane Arthur and Merlin storyline already, which has already been used in in several movies too, including Transformers: uh, <laughs> The Last Night, which is one of the worst Transformers sequels ever. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one either. <sighs> oh, whatever, man. This is just too much. I'm just glad the film bombed. So, don't bother. You know, I, I bet in a couple years, you know, even though they say it's going to be a cult classic, I doubt this is going to happen. Because in a, in a couple years, no one's going to even remember this movie. I mean, I just can't believe Neil Marshall had to direct such a bad film a whole lot worse than Doomsday but I just never thought that Mike Manola joining in with Andrew Cosby would write such a such a really bad screenplay it just doesn't do any justice to the story whatsoever and I'm just amazed that both Harbour and Drabokovich had to respond of all the negative reaction that it got I mean, he, in fact, Harper even compared this like chocolate, which, that's not a great sign for that. And I love chocolate. And I'm amazed that Javokovic, uh, which I know her films have been slammed by critics, yeah, including the Ultraviolet, that this film is going to have a cult status. But, but I know, again, in a couple years from now, no one's going to even remember this one. And I'll just stick to the first two. See, this is what happens when we when had to back down the, um, both Perlman and uh, Del Toro, because they were the main reasons what make the first two Hellboy films work. That's the problem, man. Without them, you would just have another bad film. So, stay away from it. I'm sorry, I know I'm going over the place, but I'm just fucking angry that that my brain is becoming more discombobulated. So anyway, that's the new Hellboy reboot, which the title was called <laughs> Call of Darkness. Yeah, what a title. And I give this piece of shit one star. Because, yes, I'm going to be fair. It's close to zero stars, but Maybe there's a few moments that I like, but the rest I don't. So it's it's still trash. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.